All right, guys, here we go. We're going to do part two now of the lipid experiment, cis versus trans fatty acids. As you can see in this video, we have cis fats and trans fats located right here on our desk. Now, these are molecular models, so we can look at them closely, examine them closely, and try to figure out what the differences between a trans fat and a cis fatty acid are. And it's very simple. It's a double bond. All right, guys, now we're going to weigh out 2.5 grams of this vegetable shortening, Crisco. You can buy that at any store here in Florida. So now I'm going to weigh directly into this Erlenmeyer flask because Crisco is really, really messy to work with. You're better off weighing directly into the flask. I'm going to re-zero it. There we go. Two and a half grams. Doesn't take very much, believe it or not. Better to go under than over, really. Let's try to get this in the bottom here. See how it kind of just smears around? 2.4. That's good enough. I'm not even going to go for more. 2.5 is what we want. 2.4 is what we get. I'm very happy with that. So now, we're going to move on to the next step. All right, guys, now that we have the fat in our flask, you can see the nice Crisco right there. We're going to put this little white bar into it. Now, this, see if I can get on the camera. There we go. This white bar is a Teflon-coated magnet. And we have a stirring hot plate that has a magnet underneath of it on a motor that spins, causing the magnet to spin in this little Teflon coat, causing it to stir my reaction. So I don't have to stand there with a stirring bar or a glass rod or whatever and go tink, 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 tink. I just add this. Watch how cool this is. As you can see, the stirring bar is trying to move. Now the Crisco will, because it's not dissolved yet, it's not, uh, it's not being uh, dissolved and heated yet. The Crisco is very sticky, so the stir bar has a hard time moving. But once we start heating it and have everything added to it, it'll start moving quite freely. So now I'm going to add the sodium hydroxide, and I'm going to add the uh, alcohol, the ethanol. All right, guys, be back with you in a minute. Okay, guys, we're back again. Now we're going to do the adding of the liquid material, the sodium hydroxide and the ethanol. Now the sodium hydroxide is going to be your chemical that does the reaction. It's going to take the lipid, the fat, and it's going to break it down into the soap particles or the soap molecules as well as the little bit of glycerin. So here comes the base that I'm pouring in right now. There we go, five milliliters. Now here comes the ethanol, five milliliters. This is going to act as a more or less a transfer catalyst because, you know, fat and water don't want to mix real well, so they, we give them something to help them along a little bit. Oh, we're supposed to add 10 mils, guys. I'm sorry. Let me add a little bit more of each one. We're supposed to add 10, not 5. I added 5 each. So I'm just going to add some more. No big deal. There we go. There's 5 more mils of ethanol. And... We'll do five more mils of the sodium hydroxide. So always pays to double check. We're all human. We all make little mistakes here and there. This is a very easy one to fix. There we go. Pour it down the sides. And now we let it stir. And we just kind of wait for it to do its thing. It says in the book we want to turn the hot plate up to 100, so we'll give it a little more juice. Uh, what temperature do we want? The book says we want to be at 80, right around 80 degrees. So let's put a thermometer in there. We can track the temperature. Let's crank that up to 100 just so we can have good heating. Let's get the stirring going a little quicker. There we go. Now, we're going to let that stir.
All right, guys, as you can see, the solution is starting to get opaque. Um, we heated it up, we hit the 90 degree mark, and now we're just waiting for the soap to precipitate in the flask. And you can kind of see it on top, the little whiteness is starting to form on top. Um, I feel pretty good that we're going to have some nice soap here in a few minutes. Let me just give that a swirl. See, you can see the, you can see it there. You can see all that nice soap forming there. We're just going to give that a, a few minutes to uh, cool down some more and uh, try to maximize our yield of soap. Stay tuned. All right, guys, we've waited about 15 minutes, and as you can see, our flask is now filled with soap. Isn't that kind of cool, right? That is soap floating right there in solution, or in suspension, I should say. Now, here we have a, what's called a Buchner funnel. This is a rubber stopper. This is a vacuum flask, and of course, a clamp stand and a clamp. And this bad boy right here is a vacuum pump. It's going to pull the air out of here. So it's going to pull the air through the funnel, which is going to help us uh, filter our sample a whole lot faster. Of course, you need some filter paper. Make sure I'm on camera there. And so we're going to take one of these pieces of filter paper. I'm supposed to use uh, forceps for this. Let's just do that. There we go. Oops. Got to make, got to make pretty sure you just get one. Put it on top there. Close this box up. Now I'm going to take a little bit of water. A little bit of water. This is just water. You remember, you remember these bottles from the lab, right? I'm going to squirt a little bit of water on here. And I'm going to turn the vacuum pump on. Oops. Helps to plug these things in, Dr. Betts. Electricity. What a novel idea. And there we go. Now, we are pulling through the funnel. We're pulling air down through the funnel. And I'm going to pour on my sample. I, I got myself a what's called a rubber policeman. It's used to scrape out the soap particles into the funnel. So I'm going to do that right now. There you go. I may not even need it. I want to rinse with a little bit of water. I'm going to use my rubber policeman to get in there and scrape off the sides a little bit. Pour it into there. Set that to the side. Now I'm going to wash my soap with a little bit of water just to rinse off any impurities that might be there. And that way, that way our soap will be in good working condition. Of course, I'm not going to actually use it because you never use anything you make in a lab. Um, you only use soap that you get from reputable sources or if you make it yourself at home, that's up to you. But this is because I'm making it in laboratory equipment that I know has been used for other things. I wouldn't dare uh, use this on my skin. It's just not safe. All right, so now it's pulled pretty good. Let me see if I can get you guys a nice close-up of the soap that we created. And there it is. Now, it doesn't look like bar soap because I didn't pour it into a mold or anything. That's soap right there. We made our own soap. Isn't that kind of cool? Now, the next step is I'm going to do a quick weight of it. It's going to be a wet weight, so the, water, uh, the mass of the water is going to be included in the soap. The best thing to do if I really had time is I'll wait a couple weeks, let the soap dry, and then get the, the mass of the soap at that point. But there's really no need to do that. This lab still drives the point home. All right, guys, so let's go weigh it. Okay, so now it's time to weigh our soap. Just as always, I'm going to take a weighing boat, place it on top of the pan, and then re-zero. Now I'm going to use a spatula, a laboratory spatula. If I can find one, I can't find one. I'll just use a spoon. This is a laboratory spoon here, guys. And I'm just going to transfer my soap best I can, as neatly as I can, onto the weighing boat. And I got uh, 7.611 grams of soap. Now, don't forget, uh, this is wet, so that I'm weighing the mass of a lot of water too. All right, guys, so there's the mass of our soap.